was it two years ago when yeah. Wet won? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, man, I'm not even in the same category as this dude. Like, this dude's amazing. amazing. Like, I didn't feel worthy of even being up there with him because I was just like, man, Wit is doing an amazing job. And then to see, you know, the fruits of his labor where another player was affected by it, I was just like, damn, that, that that's special. Welcoming now to the show, this year's Walter Payton Man of the Year, Pittsburgh Steeler great, I can call him a Pittsburgh Steeler great already, uh, Cam Hayward. Welcome to the show, dude. Appreciate you having me, brother. It's so good to see you. The last time I saw you, I had to go to, uh, my brother had a, a dinner, uh, not, not you, Kyle, but how he had a dinner, our youngest brother, during NFL Honors, and I didn't have my phone, and I walk into Kelsey's party, and there you are. And I'm like, How, how's your weekend going? And you're like, I just won man of the year. Uh, we're, we're in the club, dude. So how did it feel? And uh, how was the speech? I mean, I watched it, but how did that go? Dude, um, man, it was, it was one of those euphoric nights where, you know, um, I hadn't planned on it. You know, I uh, went into it thinking like, man, I'm just here to have fun, have a good time. It's in Vegas. Brought my wife and, you know, we were just going to enjoy it. But, um, you know, the. The night was awesome. Uh, they didn't tell me I was winning, so I didn't really have a speech ready. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, uh, that was crazy in itself. But, man, I was, uh, you know, this one of those moments you'll never forget. So you went off the cuff a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> well, the things that... That's always better, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, that I feel like that's always better, especially for athletes. We yeah. can... We can uh... We can maneuver those issues a little bit. Well, you, the things that came to the top of your mind, obviously you talked a lot about your mom and you talked a lot about Mike Tomlin and the, the yeah. Steelers organization. Like, those were truly the first things that came to mind, huh? Yeah. You know, um, y you want to single in on the people, like, that are there because there's, like, it's a crowd. So yeah. it's like I don't want to get lost in the middle of it. But um, I just wanted to thank them um, because, one, the Steelers gave me the, op the opportunity my mom and my wife and uh, Coach Tomlin have all, you know, been instrumental in helping us get to this point. Um, and I just wanted to thank the nominees. You know, I've been there when you won, and shoot, I, I watched you, and I was I was appreciative of just hearing your story and hearing the work you did. You know, it, it, it's cool to be recognized as, you know, the man of the year, but it's even cooler to see what the guys are doing around the league because I don't know if we do a great job of always highlighting what great job our, our guys are doing. Yeah, I always feel like bad news travels way faster than good news, and there's yeah. so much good news, man. And I just remember going there, and, you know, like, winning it's cool, and I know you've been there a lot when you were nominated, but for me, it's like everybody's a winner for being there. You know, like, all yeah. the work we're doing getting showcased and looking around and sharing the stage with certain guys. Like, for you, who was the guy that you shared the stage with that you were just blown away to be standing with? Dude, well, like... Was it two years ago when yeah. Whit won? Yeah. When Whitworth won? And yeah. I was like, man, I'm not even in the same category as this dude. Like, this dude's amazing. amazing. Like, yeah. man, I, 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 I was like, I, I didn't feel worthy of even being up there with him. Because I was just like, man, Whit is doing an amazing job. And then to see, you know, the fruits of his labor where another player was affected by it, I was just like, damn, that, that, that's special. He's a special guy, and I felt that way about all you guys. Like, I was just kind of, I felt like unworthy, the way you put it. You know, like, I almost felt guilty to win the award. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's just like, there's so many dudes who you're like, that guy's a better guy than me, <laughs> like, man of the year. It's like the MVP award. It's <laughs> like, you, it's, there's going to be arguments over it every year, but it's all good stuff, because like you said, we've got so many great people on that stage every year, and there's so many guys that probably could be on the yeah, stage the, as well. Yeah, the, there's so many guys that aren't on the stage and the whole thing, but I just... The work you do is incredible, and one of the things that I was zeroing in on was Craig's Closet, and I just think that's so cool, you know, getting yeah. dudes who are nervous about uh, a big interview or something where they have to wear a suit, the right threads, and I, I guess my follow-up question for you would be, was this the most nervous you ever were in a suit? <laughs> uh, besides, you know, the most nervous is probably when I got married. 
because uh, I was Good like, answer. why the hell is my wife marrying me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, like, what's the catch, dude? When's the other shoe going to drop? <laughs> <laughs> Who's playing the joke on me? Like, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, you know, um, I when they told me I won, I was just like, like, you see Prince Harry up there. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. How, yeah. how the heck am I supposed to, like, be up there with Prince Harry? Like, it's not, it doesn't even make sense at this point. Well, you're football royalty now. I mean, it's really the biggest award in the National yeah. Football League. People love the MVP and the Super Bowl, but it's really the pinnacle of our sport to be at the top as a man, as a football player. And you know what's great about a lot of the guys, and Cam's one of these guys that, like, I consider them, like, Hall of Fame guy, like, players and Hall of Fame guys, too. You know, like, uh, it, 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 it is a special thing to be both, and you are. And I just... When we were talking about the speech, of course, dude, when we were talking about the speech, I'm looking out there and I can remember, and I don't watch Stranger Things, but David Harbour is a guy I recognize from a lot of stuff. And, <laughs> you know, I'm nervous. I'm like, how's the speech going? And I can see like under the spotlight is David Harbour and he's sitting there like, and he's nodding. It just gave me a little juice to like keep <laughs> yeah. going. And I'm wondering, did you, could you see the people in the crowd? Like, were you kind of starstruck by anybody looking out there? Because, you know, comedians can't see. Yeah. Musicians can't see, but they light that thing so you can see everybody's face. Yeah, you know, I was trying to zero in on like people I knew because yeah. I was like, okay, Support. if I can if I can go with them, like, just trying not to look at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I knew like the host Keegan Michael Key. We yep. had met years ago at a Pro Bowl, and so you know, I saw him at the corner of my eye. I'm looking at him; he's excited for me. But then I look into the, into the you know the audience. I'm looking at Mike T. My T, you know, they have pictures of him. He looks like a proud dad in that mm -hmm. moment. I'm like, man, that, that's awesome. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm looking at my wife, my mom. I'm looking at the Peyton family because, yeah. you know, you get so close to them. And it's like, man, like, you're just appreciative because, like, you, you I, I felt like they were my biggest cheerleaders, too. So no it didn't feel like I had to, you know, you know, go off the spectrum and really, you know, talk off cuff, though. Yeah, well, I mean, like, Mike Tomlin, he's, he's, a young, he's a younger guy. He's getting older now, but, like, I always think of him as a young guy. Number one, he looks young, and number two, he acts young, like, um, and you being, like, going into year 14 coming up. What's y'all's relationship like? Is it kind of like peer-to-peer, -peer? you know, like you guys are brothers, or is it kind of like he's your big brother, or is he just coach? Uh, he's coach, big brother. Um, he, he's wrapped up in a lot, man. Uh, you know, he texted me when he was at the Combine, and he's already talking shit to me. He's already giving mm -hmm. me hell, you know, talking about I got these D linemen out here. Mm -hmm. I just want to draft yeah. them all. <laughs> so, he's, you know, he's getting underneath my skin in that mm -hmm. way. Um, but, you know, as much as he talks about my old age, I was like, now Belichick's gone. You're the oldest coach now. So mm -hmm. deal with that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's always, you know, poking That's and wild. prodding at each other to, you know, make us better. That's not real. We, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I don't believe it. I well, he's the most tenured it. for sure. Yeah. I just refuse to believe that Mike is <laughs> How old? Is, how old anything. is Mike Tomlin? Dude. Well, you, he's they got just pulled they, now, man. They he's just pulled crazy. up. They just pulled up oldest NFL coaches, and they had like Romeo Cornell in there. He's Every got, year, those eyes got a little. Bit Andy Reid still got him. Andy Reid's got him, but the, the longest tenured coach in the NFL yep. is Mike Tomlin. That makes sense. It's just incredible, Ooh. dude. And you know, I was thinking for you in Vegas, you know, and me as a guy who's been to a Super Bowl and the whole thing. Like you're imagining being in that game in Vegas. And, like, if you, if you were there this year, year 13, grizzled vet, you know these young guys' eyes get big in Vegas. Like, how, yeah. what, what do you think the challenges would have been had you guys gotten <laughs> that far of, like, of, of keeping okay. it together that week? You know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you got Pickens, like, a padlock on his room? Oh, and, and <laughs> Bro. You know there would have been just a bus leading them. You know, they took them out of the city, but you know there would have been a bus leading everybody right back to the city. No question. No so, question. Party bus, I think. Some of like, the nights. I've, I've heard about, like, when guys have been there before, there's always been a curfew of when you're in the city. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, it's more just, like, understanding we got a job to do. Like, you know, would you rather, you know, 15 minutes of feeling good or would you rather eternity of being remembered? Exactly. So, mm. That, that that that's what be my message. Like we could party after, but you know we got a job to do. Oh yeah, you, you can party after. You, dude. you know what I remember for eternity was my introduction to the Pittsburgh Steelers football team. It was my rookie year, 2013. We went up to Heinz Field on Monday Night Football. I don't know if you remember this game, but it was the game where Cutler hit Ryan Clark, I believe, outside the oh. uh, outside the hash uh, on a scramble. Well, 
During oh, one, yeah, he trucked RC. <laughs> yeah, during, during one of these. RC. Now one, we're on the same set. <laughs> during one of these plays, <laughs> during one of these plays, I'm, I'm blocking. Maybe I was blocking you or trying to block you. And the play ended, and I'm trying to walk back to the, the huddle. I'm walking by a pile, and uh, Kiesel table tops me over a pile. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to put my hand up for him to pick me up and he psychs me out mm. i got up and i was like uh you're that guy huh and he was like i guess so and to me <laughs> oh man what an asshole and, and, and my in my brain i was like i guess all the pittsburgh steelers are just assholes yeah because, you know you grow up you, you're watching james harrison he's like the biggest bully in the mm -hmm. world on the mm -hmm. football field i want to ask you because you are the archetypical Steeler right now I mean, I think about guys like Vince Williams, who many people don't know the way he played the game, uh, but people know Troy Palmalu. Who is the most archetypical stealer um, that maybe people wouldn't associate with the team that you've played with uh, since you've been in Pittsburgh? That I've played with? Oh, man. Um, I know a Landon Roberts hits as hard as almost any of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a beast. He's always coming downhill. E Rob doesn't play. Um, it might be Vince, though. Like, Vince doesn't get enough credit for what he did. Like, we always call him our 907 linebacker because, you know, if he gets you in the hole, he is going to make you pay. I think one year he had like seven sacks at the inside linebacker position. So it was just That's like. Wild. He wore 98. I know, I know. He was yeah. always just a, a running around <laughs> a big guy number out there, just lighting Shout out love. to Vince Williams. Yeah, he was a beast. He dub. Um, when you got, you, he was asking about Brett and like, I just wonder, cause there were so many vets when you got in there and like, when we got in the league, cause what was your first year? 11. 11? Yeah. Was yeah. that the lockout year? Yes. Yeah. So like you came at the cusp of like when the NFL changed to me because like, you know, when I got in the league, there were so many vets and you know, I know a good organization like yours, like there were a ton of good vets that had played a lot of good ball. And I wonder with all those vets, who was the nicest and most friendly to rookies, and then who was the biggest asshole? <laughs> who was the biggest? Oh, man. Um, you know, you're starstruck. Because, like, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Like, I yeah. was born in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So when I got to Pittsburgh, I was like, my brother, my little brother, had a Troy Palomalo fathead in his room. And I was like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. He might be so, like, when house. I got here, um, I think Troy might have been the nicest. Troy, like... That's baby Jesus. Like, yeah. he is – there's nothing he can do that's wrong. Um, and it's just, you know, he comes up to you, hey, Cam, how you doing? You know, pleasure to meet you. But then Troy tells jokes on top of it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, Troy's one of those people that's not really funny but is funny at the same mm -hmm. time just because mm -hmm. it's Troy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he always tells this joke, let me tell you a joke. And he goes, Cam Hayward. <laughs> And I'm just like, bro. <laughs> I'm just like, he's, he's a dad jokes, bro. Yeah. Oh, he's full of dad jokes. Let me tell you a joke. A joke, Cam Hayward. <laughs> so, so I guess he was the asshole and the good guy rolled into yes. one. But I, I was gonna say Joey Porter might be minus two hundred to be the, the asshole. <laughs> just from Peasy's the story not bad. I've heard. Pe okay. Peasy's Pe Pe cool. Like, you know, Peasy welcomes everybody and is usually the loudest one in the room. So. Yes. You know, that's how I am. He was an asshole to the a loudest one of the room. Cross friends him. with everybody. Yes, in the locker. yes. exactly, exactly. You need guys yes. like that. And now you're playing with his son, which is crazy. And like, yes. that's insane. And the whole and thing of like opposites. That's yeah, the crazy part. That's what I heard. And then like you, you being second generation, and him being second generation, and you crossing paths. Like, yeah. how, how how have you been able to help him with that whole deal? The pressure of it, and it's the same damn team for both you guys. Yeah, you know. For us, it's it's weird because, like, I remember when J.J. would just show up at, to camp and just be at camp just walking around, running around in a golf cart like a kid. And so seeing him now, he's a lot more prepared than people realize. Like, you know, just being around it. And I think um, when you get these second-generation guys like us, I think um, it's not like, you know, we get – enamored by you know the stuff that doesn't matter it's we love ball we just want to play ball and you know we want to prove it i think yeah. that's the, been the main thing because we've always been in the shadows of you know our dads and so it's like man i gotta i gotta set on this course for myself no question i think like 
One thing that always drove me crazy was like people just just saying, "Hey, well, you, it's all talent with you because your dad played." I'm like, "It's combine week, man. Look at some of these defensive ends, bro. The way they're testing. Like, you want to talk about freaks? We're yeah. freaks, but we're not the biggest freaks in the league. I think, you know, and especially with you having a different body type than your dad, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of guys are that way. Like, I think it's about the mental makeup." I yeah. think it's, you know, like, just for better or for worse, you're not, like you said, enamored with it. You, you don't think your shit doesn't stink because yeah. you can go home and there's somebody at home that's better than you, you know, at, for a while in your case. But, uh, but you know, like, we, we had dads that played, uh, and, and I think we, we, we were subjected to pressure that made us better. Yeah, you know, I, I was just talking to somebody, and, you know, the, the things my son's going to have to deal with as he grows Ooh. up, it's like, you know... Everybody's going to be trying you just because you're my son. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's just the way it is. You always have a target on your back. And I like it that way. Like, yeah. you, you learn to embrace that part. Yeah, you, you certainly do. And so talking about these young guys, who are you excited to see play next year? Uh, you know, take that second-year jump or maybe a second, third-year guy. I know you've got, you know, Herbig's really exciting. Benton, you've probably taken him under your wing. There's a bunch yeah. of young, exciting dudes on that team. Who can you not wait to see play next year? I think you you hit the nail right on, the, on it. You look at Keanu Benton and you look at Nick Herbig, um, you know, my Wisconsin brothers. Uh, we got a lot of those dudes these mm -hmm. days. But, you know, I, I to be a rookie and play D-line, I think Benton's got a high ceiling. Um, you know, he uses his hands well. He's able to move well. Still things he's getting used to, but – yeah. He, he's ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, and then Herbie, he just – he provides splash. Like, you know, it didn't feel like there wasn't a time he was in there. He was making a big play. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I just – him learning from TJ is always going to be big. You got TJ and Alex. So, to have a three-headed monster like that at the outside linebacker position is is crazy in our league. The first guy I asked you about when we, when we talked at the Super Bowl and we caught up a little bit was – was, you know, Highsmith's importance because I think he is just way overlooked uh, yeah. on a national media scale and, you know, overshadowed by TJ, understandably. But this guy can absolutely play it. I know he didn't go to the Pro Bowl, but this guy was a beast this year. How important is he to your defense and, and, uh, and how much do you enjoy watching him rush opposite TJ? You know, I think with TJ, you always look at it and say he's Superman, but I'm yeah. like, you know, Highsmith is Batman. And yeah. you, you get yeah. those guys off the edge and – um, they create a lot of havoc, you know. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, TJ's not the one who wants to drop, and Alex never really dropped in college, but right. Alex has got so many picks, and they're so crisp yes. in how he drops. It's it's insane. So, like, yeah. we always say, you keep catching them like that. They're just going to make you the, the drop in from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you might want to drop one of those picks <laughs> or, or run down the seam when you're supposed to be hook curl. You yeah, know, just just fuck it up, man. That's what I would do. <laughs> That's what I, would do. Um, I think what's so interesting about your division is it's so physical, but there are three different challenges, mm -hmm. like the schemes, the run schemes, the sort of things. Like you know, when you when you see Cleveland, you're going to see you know big physical dudes. You're going to see some gap scheme. You're going to see an athletic quarterback and Lamar. Uh, Joe's going to get that ball out like. Do you do you find yourself changing the way you play in each of those matchups? Yeah, you know, with Baltimore, it's it's such a heavy dose of run, um, yeah. and you know that's why I was kind of annoyed when they played this the KC. It was like you you go the run game every single game, but the, you, the second you play Patrick Mahomes, you decide to shrivel up and not be yourself. Right. Um, you didn't mind but, that though, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't care either way. So you don't root against those guys? Lose. Yeah, you want – if it was possible, you want <laughs> yeah. teams to lose? Uh -huh. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. went to the end where the they, they go can't out. go and they got to bring in another team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then you look at, like, Cleveland, um, and it, it's a heavy dose of run and play action. Um, they do a great job of, you know, getting uh, their wide receivers in good spots. Uh, and then, you know, for, for whatever reason, this year Cincinnati became more of a passing team. Um, and Ken went away from the mix and runs and, um, you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, th those guys are special. So it, it's more of a passing, spread off type of game when you play them. What's the big difference inside when you play a team that goes gun run a lot versus the team that, you know, is under center and uh, maybe some of the angles? Man, I, I think 
I think when you play when you play Baltimore, it's just like you're in a three four structure almost the entire game, yes. and you know you're worried about that fullback who's three hundred pounds over mm-hmm. there, Ricard. <laughs> so you're board. having to, <laughs> you know, our outside <laughs> linebackers have to cut him down as soon yeah. as possible. Yep. Um, but then you look at like the spread offense, and you look at you know you're usually in a two and a three, um, and you know if you stop stop them on first down and they don't get any yards. You're, you're you're setting your hair on fire at that point. You know, yes. you're really just you're playing a track a track me for the most part, and you know, on your way to the run. So, it's it's definitely different in our league, but you know, you got to be prepared for the run. You know, for the long term. Do you have one game that you remember in division that was the most physical one? I mean, I have them in the NFC West. I remember one game in particular with the Niners when they had all those dudes, and Seattle had all those dudes. It was physical, but this is a fucking. I mean, this is a washing machine, the AFC North. Do you remember one game that it was like, oh, my God? <laughs> you know, I, it, there was a stretch in the Baltimore series where um, it just felt like we were playing Navy, and it was just mm-hmm. triple option. So it was mm-hmm. just, oh, either the dive up the middle or we're going to flip it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and you just – it was like we played them, and then the worst part about it is we played them again in another two weeks. And so it was just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was like you know each other. It's just like we're going to keep beating on each other until one of us blinks. How about O-line, Kyle? Let's talk O-line. I want to hear this from both of you guys. Cam first, who do you think is the best O-line in the league? Best O-line in the league? Oh, man, I don't even want to give anybody credit. Uh, I know. Maybe not anybody in this. <laughs> I was going to ask you about a player. Like, you know, who is an O-lineman in the league that maybe deserves more credit? You don't have, yeah, you don't have to oh, fucking crown him, one. man. But yeah. you can say, hey, you know, this young guy you crown their ass, from crown XYZ them. does a good job at this. I don't think we give enough credit to Marshall Yonda. Well, yeah, dude, he was am- <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Bro, he could play center, guard, tackle, and at an all in level. every position. Like, yeah, he was a beast. Played with the nastiness and, like, you know, I, I didn't like talking about Baltimore, but, like, that was a dude who was like, okay, you better bring your heart at because that dude can go all over the place. Unorthodox pass set. Very. Really would get on you and use his hands well. He moved yes. laterally really well. I got a funny story about Yonda. So, my first time at the Pro Bowl, I'm riding the bus, and there's no – I'm, like, the last guy on the bus, and there's no <laughs> seats except for one next to Marshall Yonda. And I didn't know Marshall Yonda at the time, like, as a person. Uh, I didn't know how he was. And I sat next to him, and I was like, hey, Miss, Mr. Yonda, big fan. He's like, nice to meet you, you know, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, he's like That's a grown-up. It. It's yeah. like, you know, he's got his hard hat and his lunch Dude, he'd happy, he'd be, he said, yeah. do you mind just not talking to me before the game? <laughs> he said, I know you're excited to be here, kid, but do you mind not talking to me before the game? And it worked? And it was great. Oh, I got to yeah, try that. It worked I well. Try that. Can you I'm not talking off. to me before the show? You got to be more <laughs> He comes in here with his cup of coffee. He's just a ball of energy. I'm like, uh, uh, I got to try the Yonda thing. But yeah, Yonda was great. Uh, Yonda was, uh, was, God, he was great. Yeah. yeah, and the thing about playing Yonda was like, you'd feel that last shove all yeah. the time. That uncomfortable, like, just like the echo of the whistle that, that makes you feel like you, you have to disengage. And mm-hmm. if you disengage... Tent. And even if he's not on you, he might find you. You know, like yes. he's always around the pile. Either you lean on him or he's going to lean on you. So. It's a lean <laughs> fest, dude. It's a last shove fest with that guy. <laughs> Rob Ninkovich said it. He goes, when I had to play Marshall Yonda and he was playing tackle, he was so unorthodox, he was better than any tackle I played. Yeah. Um, and I think that happens a lot with guards that move outside because they're so different. They're used to being in a phone booth. Um, let's talk about right now, man. Like I, I, was, I was on the bandwagon all year cheering you guys on standing on couches in our live watch studio. I was big Steelers fan. And then you guys hit that that bump in the road, man. And, and oh. you know, the indie game, I felt like was like, man, the bottom just fell out because I was putting myself in y'all's shoes. And, you know, you feel like the season's on the line. Mm-hmm. And it was so hard to get a stop. I felt helpless watching because it was like they were just moving it. How did you climb out of that hole? Because the whole country left y'all for dead after that game. Um. You know, I think that was a stretch we went, uh, lost to AZ, lost to New England, yes. and lost to the Colts. And so, man, you know, it, it's easy to think, like, the sky is falling, but I think you just got to kind of just reel it in um, and just – you, you singular it. You, you, you say, dude, we got one game, and kind of just lock in on that. But we definitely don't make it easy on ourselves. It was – 
it was it was rough those <laughs> those three games and um man looking back I wish we really could have taken advantage of that opportunity. Hey, so from the outside looking in, I work on, at CBS on Sundays and we got to cover, you know, we we got to talk about all these uh these hot button things and sometimes uh, I was asked to talk about a void in offensive leadership in Pittsburgh. As yeah. a defensive leader in that locker room, at what point do you take it upon yourself to say, "I got to cross, uh, I got to cross the uh, what is it, the party line here, and go talk yeah. to this offensive group because you know they respect a guy like you." Yeah, you know, I think you know I, w- I won't relate to any one point, but th- there were times I had to go across and you know just have conversations, and I think. You know, it wasn't just me. There was other guys. And because at the end of the day, you don't want it just to be, oh, the offense is losing your games. It's the yeah. team that's losing your games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that my name is on that. And so um, I felt like I, I own some of that responsibility. And so it's more than just one guy. It's more, it's more of what do we got to do to get this right? And, you know, holding each other accountable, letting the offense grow, um, you know, it's tough because you lose Kenny for that chunk of games and then you're trying to put Mitch in, and then Mason. And so in that, you lose some stability at the quarterback position. And so um, luckily Mason got it going late and, you know, really opened up the offense because, um, you know, from the quarterback position, not having that um, that foundation to really lean on when, you know, Kenny got hurt and I think we were seven three at the time. Yeah. But we were still doing with a lot and you know, injuries and inconsistent play. Well, I gotta tell you, two of the guys I love watching the most on that offense are, you know, George Pickens and Jalen Warren. I guess I'll start with George. Yeah. Um I know he had that that stretch where people were on his his ass a little bit about finishing and that sort of thing. And you know, like there are plays where maybe if you caught me on film, you'd be yes. like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. and, and I'm sure Cam, as hard as he plays, sometimes you could run harder. I mean, but, you know, you got to reinforce that effort and that maturity. And I thought he responded really well. And, yeah. uh, and, and I loved when he was on the sideline. I was ranting about this on the show and he was doing the I can't hear you thing. And, <laughs> I, and I wish I could have been like George. You did hear everybody. <laughs> like that's why you just went for two hundred, brother. What 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 went into that for him? You know, I think George is young, and so the the way we live now, and everybody's affected by social media, and everybody's you know locked into what a reporter has said or what the media is going with. It's just you know we tell them we're riding with you, dude. Like, yeah. and you know it might not be pretty. Shoot, we all mess up. Like, yeah. Like, we just bounce back from it. And, yeah. you know, once you go out there and you show them something else, it's like, oh, now we're back in good graces. So, yeah. you know, it's just like, bro, we're never going to turn on you. It's just we just want you to be great. He can be great, man. And Jalen Warren, to me, he seems like a little bit of that archetypical stealer. You know, yeah. I and I, I love the guy, and he seems like he does and says all the right things. And I wonder, can he be one of those offensive leaders? Is, is he already? You know, I think the young Jalen Warren, um, you say he's just, you know, he's getting ready for his opportunities. Yeah. Um, but I think having a real balance between both him and Najee and them both understanding that we need both of them to be on the top of their games uh, and we need to, both of them to ask a lot of each other, that allows for them to challenge each other. And I think, um, you know, each one of them makes each other better. I, 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 I feel like when you look at our running back position – I hate teams that have more than one running back that that can dominate a game, as opposed to one running back where oh yeah, we tire you out, you're done. Yeah, no question. <laughs> and the and the the, the the different cuts, yes. that you have to anticipate as somebody who's playing two gaps at times, and and you have mm-hmm. different blocking combinations because you might see more gap scheme with one guy. And like when Justice Hill came on this year for Baltimore, and even more so that really fast kid that got hurt. I can't remember his name. It's like two months ago, Keaton Mitchell. Uh, you know, like it throws different looks at you. It like really yeah. unsettles you. Yeah, and then you, they can stay, you know, healthy throughout the entire game. And you get to the fourth quarter, you're like, shoot, I don't know what to expect at this point. But if you have one guy, it's like, we'll get used to you. We'll, we'll, we'll lock in and we'll, you know, we'll get you down. All right, so you're, you're talking to two dudes, two old dudes that have dealt with groin and adductor and hip flexors and all that stuff. I know that you've been going through it and you've went through it and you've come back and played football 
And uh, I saw one of your tweets. You know, you wanted to remi- you're going to remind these fans. What are you doing this off season to prepare your body to remind the fans? Because we know how tough dealing with that midsection, that core, that groin can be. Dude, uh, first of all, I'm just getting healthy. Like this past year was literally the one of the worst years I've had, just from a health standpoint. Um, you know, first tearing my adductor and dealing with that, and trying to come back, trying to run was. Stupid as hell. I, I look like an idiot when I can't lift myself. your knee up. You can't pick your leg up. Like yeah, and so it would just get to a certain point and be like, ah, I can't run anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, now I'm just getting healthy. Um, you know, I want to get back to my Pilates again and we get go. going from there. Do they make a reformer big enough yes. for you? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just hate spreading my legs because I just don't feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. In that position, feel, exposed, bro. You feel exposed. <laughs> my concho position. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the, I have stirrups or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's up, Cam? I have a question about your podcast, not just yeah. football with Cam. Um, how hard was it managing and and recording that podcast in season? I don't think it's that bad. You know. I, 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 I like to think I'm pretty um, organized with my time. So when it came to like, you know, we would do it every either Monday or Tuesday, you know, early in the week if we had like a Thursday game. But uh, it doesn't get too t- tough. I think the funniest part is like people think like I can't have anything to do besides football. Yes. Like, you know, they, they expect me to just be a robot all the time. And it's like. I can't talk about the game that you guys want to talk about. <laughs> right. Why Why do you – like, you see guys sitting courtside at basketball games or going to hockey games or baseball games or posting things they're doing on their bye week or whatever, but, like, you're taking an hour out of your week. Yeah. You know, like, there is a point of diminishing return with work anyways. you got to find some things to, like, stimulate yourself. I play Call of Duty for four hours a night. Like, yeah, dudes are gaming. <laughs> you can, you like, can take an hour to record. <laughs> Kyler's Yeah, and I'm usually bitching time. about something, so, you know – I get on there and I get to vent about it. It's so. cathartic, dude. For exactly. every, it's good for everybody. And it's good for the fans because they get to know people. That's yeah. the big You know, thing. like, that's the cool thing that's going to take. You want to talk about, like, us making more money, the salary cap going up and stuff. You know, like, the more players get, you know, ingratiate themselves with the fans, but more than anything, just, like, break the wall down a little bit, yeah. the more the more it's good for business. Like, you know, we wear face masks. We need to date more it's, superstars. Who do you got on that Steelers gotta, roster that's a, that's a bachelor that we can pitch who should to date maybe a superstar? Dua Lipa or Make, something? Make a Fitzpatrick. Okay. Okay. Well, that's an easy well, sell. His tape is great. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great tape. Great tape, dude. Great tape. Hey, and Nate, you got something in common with Cam, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Cam, I've been trying to get these guys to get on the Love is Blind train. To get Bro. Some, right? <laughs> Bro. So, listen, I have a question for you. <laughs> Do you think Chelsea pulled the biggest finesse in Love is Blind history yes. by saying people say I look like Megan Fox? Oh, I saw that. That's so crazy. <laughs> How, <laughs> Bro, the, the show was predicated <laughs> Literally, I'm not knowing what her someone scouting looks profile like. said. I look like Megan. No, she said that people say <laughs> I like, look yeah, like, like Megan. Fox, that's like getting a Brady and think, comp, and you can't even throw it out. <laughs> oh man, poor Jimmy, poor Jimmy. She finessed Jimmy. Okay, okay, okay. Let me break this down. First of all, she didn't even say Megan Fox. This is how she finessed it. She goes, oh, yeah. "Yeah, I'm, I'm like she Megan. Did. I'm like." MGK's girlfriend or yes. wife, uh, and it's like he's like mm. Megan Fox, and so he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you walked so him into he that. Said it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And the other girl was like, you will be kicking yourself. Like he yes. was like he he was like, I'm just telling you, she doesn't look like Megan. I need Fox. to watch this, <laughs> bro. This show is just gold. It's gold. And another question: Do you think <laughs> this any is of great? These, this is go all day. Any of these relationships, like. We'll stand the test of time. Before we get there, I just got to say the other finesse was. <laughs> there was one more finesse because Tell they me. didn't show it in the show, but then they went back and they started giving like behind the scenes stuff. They said Jimmy looked like uh, Christian uh, McCafferty. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. And so I was like, kind of thrown off by that. I'm like, <laughs> man, people out here lying and scamming. In the <laughs> that's show. crazy, oh, man. That's but if I can address your question, um, you know, when I look at this show, it's just, <laughs> it, it's a train wreck, bro. It's a, this. it's a train wreck. Like the only couple I think that might have a chance is what is her? It's Johnny and Amy. Okay, and, and, and I think. 
the only thing that's weird, the dude's like, well, you got to stay on the birth control. And I'm like, bro, you got to strap up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. my guy. Yeah. You got to do your half. Yeah. That is <laughs> Keep so, of the street. that is so funny, bro. I just was literally watching that scene. So the and... premise is just like blind dating. Yes, blind like you, dating. Don't, you don't see the person. You have a week to basically find someone you want to propose to. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, you're, you're having all these blind dates. So there's like, a wall between you at yes, the table. Yes. So yes. you're walking. The, the girls are you walking in the door. You can smell their voice. You just, you can no. just hear their voice and see no. their no. silhouette. <laughs> yeah, it's Stevie Wonder speed dating. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. See, that's good, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie might not be, though, really, though, actually. I've heard a lot of stories about Stevie driving Hilarious. golf carts and shit. Like, oh, Shaq, God. Shaq, said, Shaq said he walked on an elevator one time. Stevie Wonder looked up and said, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, dude? Dude, have you seen uh, The Greatest Night in Pop? Not no. Netflix. Okay, so there's a part in there. In oh, I life. heard about it, though. This is like back in the day. Yeah, so like there's Stevie Wonder and um, is it Ray Charles? I think it was Ray Charles was there. Uh-huh. And so Ray Charles said he had to go to the bathroom, and Stevie Wonder was like, I'll take you. And then somebody was like, it's the blind <laughs> leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> they end up in the kitchen. Somebody's <laughs> pissing in the casserole. Oh my god, dude! I gotta watch this show, man. Love is blind. When bro, does it come bro, on, bro? I'm telling you, like it's you'll binge insane. it. You'll be like, so I can get it on my smart smoke. TV. I can just pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Me and my wife are gonna watch it. Here's yes. the crazy thing. I feel like they, they they could bring that show to Charlottesville for sure. Oh, let's do it, bro. They need to do it with athletes and just watch everybody like hype up. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> I run a four three. Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Someone said I look like T.J. Watt. It's like <laughs> Ryan Jensen. I have a six pack. Some morning. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, Cam Hayward, man. You, uh, man. Come back again, dude. Back we love talking to you. Man. Hey, dude, so much respect for you. I'm so happy for you. When I saw you at Kelsey's party, I was just like, there he is. It, c- it couldn't have happened to a better guy, dude. And um, welcome to the club, I guess. It feels weird for me to say that to you because uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you exemplify the award, my dude. Appreciate that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the club and honored you guys even have me on the show today. Dude, anytime, anytime. Good luck. Go get him next year, bro. Get that adductor yes, right. Sir. And we'll talk about Love is Blind another time. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, bro. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, take it easy.